Hey guys, so this is 61723, um, 616 in the morning. Um, so the righteous will flourish in the earth. The righteous will flourish in the earth. He will be blessed by the work of his hand. I, the Lord God, will see them and protect and bless them. Jesus the Messiah will be their king. He will rule with love and justice. For generations, they will enjoy peace and joy. From the temple will flow healing water. The water will heal the people, the land, and all it touches. The river will flow in two directions. The land will provide bountiful amounts of food. The hills will grow in beauty. The animals will be at peace. The trees that line the river will heal and nourish. All who live in the city of truth will be righteous. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and self-control will be natural within one another. The laws of the land will be the laws that help people to understand and obey how to be righteous, sanctified, and holy. The society will be a people of love. Love will rule. Kindness will enforce. Patience will be the norm. Goodness between others will overflow. Self-control, the expectation. Joy will be society's mood. Peace will be the result. The reign of Christ will let the standards of the Bible come to life. The city will be a living testimony to the words you read every day, the words of my scripture. The words of the Bible have always been a guide as to how to live, a benefit to help you on earth. But that millennial reign of Christ will open a new chapter of history for the earth. The world as I envisioned. A world of peace, joy, and blessings with direct contact with Christ. It brings me joy to see how life will be for those that live in this generation. I delight to think of the children, loved and nurtured with kindness, given mercy and grace and encouragement. The benefits that outpour from this upbringing will be beyond what you can imagine. Those children, fully exposed to my son and understanding his every word, because the evil one will be bound in the pit, their minds not distracted or harmed by man's sciences. The purity of society, the safety, the collective aim at righteousness, I rejoice. There will be some left on the earth after Armageddon, mostly those that were in remote places and that could avoid the mark of the beast. They will all go through my wrath. However, I will have just recompense. Those who were not wicked in heart, but did bow down to my son in the end, when he showed his power, they will not have become righteous, holy, or sanctified. But these will indeed drop their idols and have awe. I will separate them. They will live in their own land. They will learn from my son how to be sanctified. Most will comply. It will be the law of the earth that the nations, tribes, and people come to the city of righteousness and bring offerings, none allowed to enter unless righteous. If a tribe, family, or city refuses to come or is unable to come because they have forgotten their Messiah and are unworthy to enter, the land will not receive, their land will not receive rain. They will repent or suffer in drought. At the end of the thousand years, it is law that the evil one will be released from the pit and allowed to try and manipulate and deceive as he did Eve and he does to most of the world now. He will have a short time to whisper in the ears of the tribes and the nations around my blessed people. He will speak to those in the north and encourage them to gather others who have the will to surround the people in an effort to war. In their feudal wisdom, they being mere mortals, think that they have the ability to supersede my laws of protection that surround the city of peace. They will gather as their forefathers gathered to war against my son at Armageddon. Their pride will blind them from the inevitable results, their loss unthinkable to their small minds. Their just recompense for their rebellion against me, sparing the lives of their kin, and 
Their turning on my people will be instant. The moment they begin their attack, all of the people gathered for war will instantly have my wrath. Fire will come down from heaven. Their faces will melt. They will perish. All of mine and all of those who continued on in righteousness will be spared. To eradicate evil and wickedness, and all those who are susceptible to evil and wickedness forever. I will open my courts of judgment and give them their just rewards, all who are covered by my son's blood and who are mine have no need of worry. In my eyes you are sin free and your just reward is an eternity in him. This is being judged by grace, which is above the law. For those who did not choose me, they will be judged by the law. They will receive their just consequences for their status. All not under my law in full obedience will go to the lake of fire for eternity. What about those who lived long before Jesus came to be the propitiation for sins, you might be asking? Those who walked the earth before Christ the Messiah came to save his people those that lived according to my law that I gave Moses are already in heaven. They, like many Christians now, were obedient to the laws of their time. And they were seen by me legally as pure and acceptable, sanctified and set apart for me. These that walked the earth before my one and only son, but did not hold to the laws I had for my people, will all come before my throne for judgment. All who were evil, wicked, worshipped idols, or did not submit to my laws, all will go to the lake of fire. At this point, all evil and all who have the potential to be evil will be eradicated from humankind. All those in heaven will be pure, righteous, and sanctified. All will have been tested for purity within a portion of their lives. Some of you wonder how all of this could occur. I am God. I created the universe. I have the ability to extend life, to mold hearts, to bring justice. Some wonder if they are raptured, why would they want to come back to earth to live? Not all mysteries are to be revealed. However, those that survive the difficult years of the Antichrist tyranny will be the core of the populace of this society. They will have a higher commitment to me, so much so to be willing to offer their life if needed. Those with those on the earth in the thousand year reign will be in joy. Those with heavenly homes or those who live at Gaboa will have other responsibilities and joys. Some will be requested to help with the earthly rule of Christ. Others will be blissfully in heaven. Rest assured you will have joy no matter where you are if you belong to me. Also note that Jesus will be fully accessible to all in the city and of his rule in heaven. His role at my right hand will not cease. Be at peace if you are mine. Only the best is yet to come. Your soon rest and peace arrives in a short time. Stay steadfast. Keep your eyes on me. Wonder not how and when. It will all unfold. Trust me, I am. Then I was given these verses I need to read. So it's James 1. James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations, greetings. Con consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave in the sea, blown and tossed about by the wind. The person should not expect to receive anything. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all that they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. But the rich should take pride in their humiliation since they will pass away like a wildflower. 
For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant, its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. The blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, having stood the test that that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil de desire and enticed. Then after the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Do not be deceived, my Dear brothers and sisters, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chooses to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires, therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. The second verse I was given is Isaiah 42, 5 to 9. This is what God the Lord says, the creator of the heavens who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to its people, and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. See the former things that have taken place and the new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. So I hope you find that encouraging and I'll see you next time.